What's going on guys? We're back at Tim's Harley Davidson with another review. Today it's the 2021 Sportster 48. This has been one of my favorite Sportsters for a long, long time, and now it's one of the only three Sportsters that Harley has continued to make. The other two being the 1200 and 883 irons. Now this bike starts at 11,300. That's for the Vivid Black option. Today we are reviewing the Billiard Blue, but it also comes in Crimson Red. Both of those colors cost you about 350 extra bucks. And really quickly, before we jump into the review, I wanna remind you guys about First Manufacturing. They make premium motorcycle riding apparel. Check them out. I'll put a link in the description down below. And remember to use code SNIPES25 to get 25% off. Let's jump into the review. So before we jump into the review, I thought I would just do a quick walk around, let you see the bike for what it is. This is the first 48 that Tim's has gotten in. The new bikes dropped in January. It's the very end of March at the time of reviewing this. This is the first one they've gotten in. I've been wanting to do a review of the Sport Glide. We haven't gotten one of those in. So Harley's not pumping these bikes out like they were previously. And then with the Sportster, that whole thing's still up in the air as to whether or not they're gonna continue. So if you guys want a Sportster, you better jump on one quick. Jumping into the review, we start with the tank as always. Gotta be completely honest, not in love with that graphic. This tank is such a cool shape. Like it's such a good looking tank to me. I love these little peanut tanks. I love how low they sit down on the frame, especially paired with those bars. I just feel like they could have done a badge. It would have been slightly more expensive, but would have really added a lot to this bike. Would have liked to have seen that. You do have this little gap here. Now people either love or hate that. I'm on the camp where I like it. I think it looks really good, but I know a lot of people do not like that look. Your bars, these short little, almost cafe racer-ish bars. Uh, I think it looks really good. Does a lot for the bike from the front end, as well as the mirrors. So this is something I've done on my bikes myself in the past, which is essentially you know, they've printed it because this one is made this way, but essentially this mirror would go here and be upright this way and vice versa. So if you've got a bike and you want to drop the mirrors down, obviously make sure it's going to clear on your tank. As you can see, this one was made too, so there's plenty of room, but just take the right side, move it to the left, the left side, move it to the right. And in my opinion, that's a much, much cleaner look on these bikes, no matter which model it is. Now the 48 has these really beefy forks on the front. I like that a lot. I'm a fan of that look. Uh, the Slim has it, I like it. The Fat Bob has it, I like it on that one as well. They do this really short, sporty front fender. Very bobber looking overall, you know, not just from the side profile, but from the front as well. The 48 really looks like a bobber. They give you this big fat front tire, really nice looking wheel that kind of completes that look. All right, so this is your view when you're sitting on the bike. Typical Sportster fashion, you do get the small analog speedo with the little digital readout there. I'll cut the bike on really quick so you guys can see that. So this first screen that we're on is gonna show you what gear you're in as well as the RPM. Engine's not on, so obviously the RPM is sitting on zero. That's how many miles you have on the bike, your trip A, your trip B, your clock, and then back to the gear and RPM. So pretty simple. To change those, it's really easy. You just toggle through here, and that's going to change all of this. Really easy to do. Uh, you do have some little indicator lights here, turn signals, oil, neutral, things like that. Going back to this tank, one of the things that people dislike about the Sportster, specifically the tank, is although it looks good being that small, this one on the 48 only holds 2.1 gallons. I don't think I've ever been able to actually get two gallons in a Sportster, which just means you're gonna have to stop a little bit more. But on the Sportster, although it's not an uncomfortable bike, it's not the most comfortable bike. So with roughly 45-ish miles to a gallon, you'll probably want to hop off for a minute there <laughs> anyway. Not a big deal unless you're riding with a big group of people who have bigger tanks and don't have to stop as often. It's a little more annoying for them. I'm not recommending that you do this because it's illegal to put fuel in uh, 
container that's not approved for it but allegedly we may run some fuel in like a Gatorade bottle and someone sticks in their saddlebags just in case the distance between gas stations is too great and the sporty can't make it. Again, not advising you to do that, just saying that's a little hack that I've heard of people doing before. Going back to the seat, you see it's super low profile, nice, clean, simple, but one thing that I've learned over my time with Harley Davidson is typically the better the seat looks, the worse it feels. I can't recall any long, long rides that I've done on the Sportster, nothing over about an hour. It didn't give me any trouble at that mark, but I can imagine, you know, three, four hours in, the seat may get a little rough. So that's probably something I would look at changing if this were my personal bike. I do like that they've started doing the adjustable shocks. They've been doing these on the Sportsters for a while now. It's fairly simple. These nuts here just spin and loosen with the little wrench that they give you and your little dots help you dial in where you need to set it based on what the manual says and that's based on your weight. So if it's just you, if it's you with a passenger, if it's you with some luggage, you can dial in these shocks for exactly what you need. I highly recommend you do that. The ride is significantly better when the suspension is properly set up. Looking at the back of this bike, you see it's pretty clean. Your turn signals and tail lights are built into the same little housing unit. So I like that they did that. Your license plate is off to the side. As you know, if you've watched any of my other videos for bikes that do that, I don't love that. I like it more on the back fender and the center, but on the Sportster, it doesn't seem to stick out quite as far as some of the other models. So I don't hate it on this bike either. Now your 48 is a 1200cc model. I've seen these things punched out. They do the big bore kit. And some of these bikes are making a little over 100 horsepower, which on the Sportster is a ton of power. These things are really, really fun to ride when you bore them out. They're fun if you just open it up. Put a stage one kit, some exhaust, an air cleaner, uh, tuner. It's good to go like that, but when you jump the horsepower up to the 100 plus numbers, it really makes a big difference. So your other two Sportster models for this year are the 883 iron and the 1200 iron. Both of those come with the mid control that's gonna sit right back here, whereas the 48 does come with the forward control which, let, which lets you stretch your legs out a little bit more, a little bit more comfortable for the longer rides. So the Sportster is often referred to as a girl's bike or a beginner's bike. I've ridden tons of Sportsters. I've had fun on them all. I know plenty of people that ride a Sportster, uh, guys that have been riding for years, guys that have multiple bikes, but also own a Sportster and choose to ride it on occasion. So I thought I would hop on here and kind of let you see what that looks like. I'm 5'11", about 205 pounds, and you see it fits me fine. It doesn't look too small. It's actually really fun to ride because it is a little smaller. It is pretty sporty. You can throw it around. So guys, that's about it as far as the walk around portion of this video. The Sportster is like a no frills, but in a good way kind of bike. You're not paying for a ton of extra stuff that you either don't want or aren't gonna use, or you're gonna take off and change anyway. It's a really great platform to start building a bike to make your own. So I'm a big fan of the Sportster, especially these 1200 models. I think they're great, great bikes. With that said, we'll go ahead and get this one out, do the test ride and see what it's about. Okay, so for those of you that stick around for the test rides, I appreciate that. But also we got something special. I got another GoPro, so we're running a second angle you can see it right here uh, I might even get a third just so we can make these test ride sections a little more interesting I mean I know most of you are sticking around for information on you know how the bike feels and rides but still just to make it a little easier to watch I think uh, that second angles really helps and maybe a third will help as well also I realized that uh, when I was editing this video in the beginning, I called this Billiard Blue. It's Billiard Teal. I'm sure plenty of people that aren't going to watch this part of the video have already corrected that in the comments. But just so you know, it's Billiard Teal, not Billiard Blue. And as you can see in the sun, this color is awesome. Comes on a couple of the bikes this year. I know the Street Glide and the Road Glide. And I really, really, really like this color. Um, anyway, jumping into the 48. So like I said, it's one of my favorite bikes, like styling-wise. 
I've always liked the 48 and I like the 72, which they don't make anymore, but just, just based on the looks. Uh, I do like this fatter front tire that they do on the 48. Super stable, kind of like the Fat Bob, just feels a little bit better pushing it hard in the corners and whatnot. And a lot of people, you know, like I talked about, a lot of guys especially kind of shun the Sportsters. It's not a man's bike, it's a girl's bike or a beginner bike. Like I said in the review, man, I've had tons of fun riding Sportsters. This one's awesome. Uh, we went a different way today on the test ride. Uh, I let time get away from me and it's about five o'clock while we're doing this test ride and traffic is gonna be crazy either way. So we're gonna try a little bit different of a loop today and see, I mean, I know we're in traffic now, but uh, we should be able to hit a few back roads really quickly. And also I, I get that these test rides don't need to be extremely long. I've also cut out any of the, uh, I've cut out a lot of it just the sitting at the red light and little stuff like that that, I mean, what's the point, you know. So I do like these bars that come on the bike. Typically I'm, I'm pretty big on changing bars on bikes. I don't know what I would change on this one. I mean, it's real easy to always default back to, you know, the T-bar, the tall riser with the moto bar, whatever, but I don't know if that's the move on this one, honestly. Uh, these bars with these forward controls kind of lends itself to what seems to be fairly comfortable for me, but again, take that with a grain of salt because I'm not riding any real distance with this setup. Like I said, I do like the mirrors like this. Uh, to me, it looks better. I can see just as well or better than if they're sticking up, but I hate when they're sticking up. It reminds me of like a deer with the ears sticking up or something. So I do like this look a lot better. Right. This is the road we can kind of open it up a little bit and have a little bit of fun on. Got some curves. I mean, this bike is easy. It just, it feels effortless kind of throw it around and curves, light, good power. Like I said, if you just open this thing up with an air cleaner, exhaust, and a tuner, it really, really changes things. Or you could go full on stage four, 100 plus horsepower and have a, a rocket. I've ridden a few Sportsters like that and that's what they feel like, such a small bike. Like you actually need like a little hump or a bump on the back of the seat to keep you from sliding off when you hit it, which makes for a lot of fun for not a lot of money. I mean, like we talked about, this bike's like 11.3 if you get it in black or another 350 bucks for the color option, so. Pretty good value here. I definitely, you know, I know we talk a lot on the channel about if you're gonna take trips or longer rides. Honestly, I'm, I'm not a far distance rider, especially on a Sportster. I mean, you'd have to do a lot to accommodate luggage and things like that. And I just, I don't think it is, it's not built for that. It's just not gonna be comfortable. But I mean, if you live, you know, two hours outside of somewhere cool, that would, that would not be an issue for me. I mean, you're talking four hour total trip, broken up most likely. So I'd be good with that. Plus the Sporty sounds great with exhaust. I know this one doesn't sound that great. I love this new angle where you can see the suspension working on that front end. But that's about it for this one, guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you like the new angle or if you've got ideas for angles that would look kind of cool. I know a lot of people that do these reviews where they ride the bikes, have a GoPro pointed at themselves. I'm not opposed to that. I just don't know if anybody cares to see that. Not that exciting to watch in my opinion. My buddy's house. Um, but that's it guys. So let me know what you think about the Sportster down in the comments. Please subscribe if you're not already. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps more people find it, which lets me make a little bit more money. 
and in turn allows me more freedom and time to do these videos. So thanks for watching, guys.